Hey YouTube, and welcome to the master guide on how to improve your aim in Fortnite. Fortnite is a lot different than other shooters, because there are so many more aspects to the game than just lining up your shots. With that being said, you aren't going to win much if you don't get that basic but essential part of the game down, hitting your shots. So today, I am bringing you guys the master guide on how to improve your aim in Fortnite. This is going to be broken down into three parts, and I'm going to try to get through each part as quick as possible. We'll go over settings, in-game tricks, and general tips to help you improve your aim, with time markers in the description if you want to jump between these categories um, at any point in the video. Okay, so without further wait, let's get right into it. Alright, so to start out for settings, you are going to want to make sure you have mouse acceleration disabled on your computer. This feature makes it so that when you move your mouse quickly, your cursor will move increasingly faster. This can really interfere with your aim, so to disable it, you have to make sure it is set to off on your Windows settings as well as in your Fortnite game files. To do this in Windows first, you are going to want to go to your search bar in the bottom left and start typing pointer options until you see this pop up. Click on it, and from there, go over to the tab that says pointer options, and make sure to deselect enhanced pointer precision, save that, and you're good there. Now to disable mouse acceleration in your Fortnite client, make sure you're closed out of Epic Games and all Fortnite tasks on your computer. Then once that's done, you're going to want to pull up the run function on your computer by holding the Windows key and pressing R at the same time. Once you're here, type in percent app data percent and click OK. Now you're going to want to navigate back from roaming to the app data folder. Once you're here, go to local, Fortnite game, saved, config, and then user settings. Make sure you open this with notepad and then change disable mouse acceleration to true. Once you're done with that, save the document and then exit out. Before you leave though, right click on that document under the properties, then general and attributes tab, turn on read only and save it. This makes sure the Fortnite client does not automatically change this new mouse acceleration preference you've just set later on. Okay, now that we're done dealing with mouse acceleration, let's go over some in-game settings in Fortnite. Once you've opened Fortnite, the only two tabs we'll have to deal with in-game to help improve your aim is the video and the game tab. The first two once you open your in-game settings. The video tab is important because these settings will affect how smoothly your game runs, and playing with a choppy frame rate will undoubtedly make it harder to aim. The game settings tab is home to your sensitivity and HUD size, which can also be optimized to better your aim. Starting with the video tab, it is crucial that you are playing in full screen. Full screen almost always will improve your frame rate, and actually on many PCs, playing on windowed full screen or windowed instead of full screen will create an input delay where mouse movements in game will occur noticeably longer after they are performed in real time, which is obviously not desirable. You're also going to want to make sure your game can run comfortably under at least 60 frames per second. In general, as long as it doesn't bother you, I would recommend playing on the lowest quality settings, because while these settings do make the game look nice, they can be very distracting and some of the lighting effects can actually hide enemy players depending on the skin they are using. So once again, if you can, turn these settings to low. If your game is still struggling to run smoothly at 60 FPS on low settings, you can turn down your display resolution, but I would warn you from going much below 720p or any other HD resolution, because at that point some of the pixels can start to blend in around one another, and it can be hard to distinctly see other players. I'll try not to stray too off topic, but another way you can prove how the game runs just by changing settings is transitioning over to a stretched resolution, which is basically anything other than the conventional 16 by 9 aspect ratio that most monitors run on. I won't show you how to do this because there are many in-depth guides and a whole range of resolutions out there to try. But I can say that a stretched resolution will make your character smaller and more zoomed out, which is good because it will increase your field of view and allow you to see more. Playing on stretched will also increase the size of enemy players, usually improve your FPS as well, and it will decrease the size of your HUD, allowing you to see more. From the stance of improving your aim, it is a no-brainer to be playing on stretched, but the cons tend to be that it can make the game look a little ugly, cause certain images to display weird in game, usually take some time to get used to, and can sometimes be tricky to set up. If you can though, I would definitely give stretch resolution a try. If you can't deal with how much the game changes, you can try minor res changes before changing your res completely. Okay, so that's all for stretch resolution. Just one more important setting though in the video tab is motion blur. All this is going to do is blur your screen and make it harder for you to aim. So for sure, turn this off. All right, now onto the game tab. 
Here, the only two things I'm going to touch on are your mouse sensitivity and your HUD scale. HUD scale is a little easier and quicker to go over. Basically, you want to go as low as you can while still being able to see your HUD comfortably. Turning it down will just allow you to see more around you and help you track people, so if you can turn it down, that's definitely a plus. On the other hand, sensitivity does come down to personal preference and will vary for different setups, but I'm going to list out certain guidelines that you should probably be following when trying to find a good sensitivity. First off, whatever you decide on, you need to stay consistent. I fell into the trap of constantly toggling my sensitivity up and down, trying to figure out what I liked, but what you really need to do is pick a sensitivity and stick with it until you notice a specific problem or something that your current sensitivity is inhibiting. As a general rule, make sure that if you move your mouse from the left end of your mouse pad to the farthest to the right, you are doing around or more than a 360 degree turn in Fortnite. In other words, going from the middle of your mouse pad to either the left or right edge will turn your character around completely, 180 degrees. This way, you don't have to pick up your mouse to aim when you're shot at and you can cover all angles around you. Sensitivity is very subjective depending on what mouse pad and DPI you are running, but I would say for your mouse pad, bigger is better. For your mouse, you're going to want to invest in a name brand such as Razer Logitech, and I wouldn't use more than 1500 DPI on your mouse and 0.15 vertical and horizontal sensitivity in Fortnite. I've always found it's better to stay equal with vertical and horizontal sensitivity, but some people prefer otherwise, so I'll leave that up to you. Okay, that should wrap things up for the settings portion of the video, and now we'll go on to in-game tips to help improve your aim. When we're talking about improving your aim in Fortnite, we're only really talking about a few guns, because a lot of the meta right now just comes down to spraying. So in this video, I'm going to keep it to your AR and shotgun. If you have the jump on the enemy, always crouch while you shoot because crouching will actually decrease your bullet spread and reduce the time for first shot accuracy to reset. When you're aiming at someone, always try to go for upper body shots, that way you have a better chance of getting a headshot. If you're lining up a shot with an AR and the enemy can't see you, you should wait until you can guaranteed hit their head using that first shot accuracy before you start firing. With shotguns, I think it is more important to take time to line up your shots, especially with a pump or heavy shotgun, rather than shooting immediately when you spot the other player. A lot of the time, this means not jumping or even crouching in close quarters if that's what you need to do to hit your shots. You have to remember that if you're jumping around in a build fight, yes, it may be harder to hit you, but that will also affect your own aim. So prioritize taking time and hitting your shots, even if that means you have to slow things down and maybe pause in the middle of fights. It is generally okay to jump a lot when spraying people with, for example, a drum gun or SMG when in extremely close quarters, but otherwise, don't do it. I could go on and on forever covering different guns and tips to use each one better, but the best thing to do to get meaningful practice in-game is to drop game after game into high-density, highly populated areas and fight as much as possible. This strategy has been preached by Ninja over and over again, as well as Shroud back when PUBG was first taking off. What I personally am not a big fan of is using external aim trainers on your browser or in other games to help try to improve your aim in Fortnite. These aim trainers aren't going to match your Fortnite sensitivity and don't offer the same circumstances of aiming while it's under pressure, at different heights, with different guns, and so on and so on. One way you can improve your aim in Fortnite if you get tired of dropping in popular locations and dying is by playing Save the World if you have it and using that to practice with the same guns that are in the Battle Royale game mode. That is all I have to say for in-game strategies, so lastly let's move on to general tips outside of Fortnite that you should practice. Firstly, whatever setup you have, you should stay consistent with it. Try not to change desks, mouse pads, mouses, or any other things if you don't have to. To improve your aim, you are going to want to decrease all of the other outside factors that could negatively be affecting your progress. Secondly, make sure your arm is not hanging below your desk and your mouse pad. If your elbow is hanging below your wrist, it is going to be very hard to move your mouse with control and over a long distance, so make sure your elbow is supported and above your mouse pad. This way you can use your arm to assist your wrist while aiming. If you still need convincing of this, take a look at any other Fortnite YouTubers face cams, especially professionals, and look at their setups. You'll consistently notice that their arms are always raised up above their mouse. There's also something to be said for keeping your hands warm while you play. Trying to aim while cold can make your movements very jittery and is overall not ideal. So whatever way works for you, try to keep your fingers and hand warm while you play. Having a clean mouse pad and mouse is also important. Playing with either worn down or dirty peripherals won't help your aim at all. And lastly, before we conclude this video, we're going to quickly go over mentality. 
Hitting your shots is all about confidence. Just like in sports, if you miss a lot and get nervous, you're going to be jittery and all over the place with your shots. Cypher PK has made a couple videos on this that I will link in the description, but the too long don't read version is this. Stay calm and confident. You need to expect to hit your shots and be confident with your aim, because getting nervous will undoubtedly cause you to lose control and miss more shots. Secondly, you need to stay calm, which can get harder and harder the later you get into a game, but you can't let that affect you. Aiming is a calm, fluid, and controlled process. Crazy flick shots people hit on highlight montages happen when they mess up their positioning or aim beforehand and then have to compensate in very little time. The vast, vast majority of the time, you need to stay calm and control your emotions when aiming. That's the mindset that will help you improve the most and better your accuracy. Okay, we've made it to the end of the video. Like I said earlier, if you need to go back to review any specific part of the video, there are timestamps in the description. Any content or useful tips from other creators or players will be credited in the description as well. So if you want to learn more from them, that is where to look. As always, if you did find this video helpful, please do leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to leave any comments as well if you need help or have any feedback below. And I'll see you in the next one.